most used scripts, and they come in a couple of forums. So I'm going to actually build them from scratch. <clears throat> scratch this is not something I usually do. Uh, so let's leave all this stuff off, and uh, let's build these scripts from how I actually do build them. Um, uh, let's go so far as to take them right off this uh, uh, panel. Um, actually. It's one of my most used scripts that I uh, do, and then a couple of forms. And it's something I like to do in Grasshopper as opposed to waiting to bring surfaces into Rhino and then doing things in Rhino. So we'll just take a look at that. I will erase this for now. Um, and possibly, I think what I'll do is just put it on uh, preview off and just get them out of the way, which would probably be the best thing to do. And if I make any scripts, I can always come back into it. So, um, what you basically want to do is you want to pull in a surface and I have a surface here that's made and just for those that are new I think it might be good to show how I made it. Uh, uh, very simple I went in and I made a right click here chose to make a plane uh, brought a plane out I click on it I type in a keyboard rebuild and these are things I probably you'll see quite often I set it for six and six in UV direction and then I put my points on, I grab a couple of points, I pull them off this direction, grab a couple of points here, push them down that direction, a couple of points here, pull them off this direction. I've got a pretty good edited surface. And what I do with that surface is I'll take my points off. I can click on that and I can go into my containers and very quickly grab a surface. And with a right click, I can set one surface to that and it's been installed. Uh, that said, I can always take all these forms and hide them. And now you can see I have a surface that's ghosted in Grasshopper. First thing I'm going to do that surface, because I may in time build a cluster out of this, is I'm going to take that surface and put it over here and actually bring it into a second one and make sure I reparametize that. That way, if I add this to a cluster, when I end up making clusters of data, uh, if you don't know what that is, you can take a look at clusters online or I'll try and explain it as we go. You can always have something that's been fed into it and then this tucks into the cluster and then it can change from whatever the input is. This would be the input, a surface that you bring in from, and uh, anything else you bring in will be parameters and number sliders. So let's take that and let's do what um, I like to use uh, to build. And I'll show you this little trick to offset a surface and have fairly controlled. It's not as juicy and fluid as I like it, so I'll show a second script after. I use the ISO trim tool, so you can just type in ISO and then look up here for ISO trim, and there's one of my sur reparametized surfaces coming in, and immediately it needs a domain. Now it's not going to need a domain, it's going to need constructing a two, uh, two uh, uh, deep domain because we're not dealing with a single one. And what I'm going to do is set this to a very simple number slider of creating a domain from 0 to if you just type in 0.5, you'll get a slider from 0 to 1, and you can always bring your slider up to 0.5, and I'll show you exactly why I'm doing that, because as I trim the surface, that's what I've done. I want to trim it not only in the U, but in the V direction, so I've got a quarter of this. And now if you look at the surface, it's got vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and how you might number them. What I'm going to do to that surface that I now have is go into Surface Tool and hit DBREP, uh, bring it in, uh, and I will grab an index item from my s uh, uh, list uh, item and take the faces, uh, the vertices of that, and ensure that I grab uh, this one, not zero, not one, not three, but two. So if you double click, you can type in uh, quotation marks two, and that will set you a panel at the number two, and you've got an index that indicates the center of this, pretty much the center of this area. Now, what happens with that is it's fairly interesting is it's been located right on the surface on that on that area. And what you end up doing is finding the closest point. So we're going to go to surface closest point at that time, surface closest point, which is a common tool. I'm going to use the same reparametized surface a second time and use that point as the point. And now I have a point here, and I have a point uh, item there. And what's nice is that point has been referenced there. And I want to also evaluate the surface which I come in here and I will grab the Evaluate Surface tool. And once again, grab my reparametized uh, surface, put it into here, and use this point. Uh, actually, use all UV points for that reference. You'll see now I have a point, a normal, a U direction, a V direction, and a frame. Uh, that is what I'm going to use to do 
my extrusion. And here comes my extrusion. And this is a fun little tool, and I'll show you how you can change it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to grab my extrude tool. I'm going to grab my surface for the last time pull it into my extrude, and all this data that I just generated, and it can be changed quite a bit too, all this data can be used, and I'll show you how you can play with this as well, um, to be the actual normal that's fed into, I'm going to show you a little quick trick here to amplify, just a multiplication, and I will hold down Control, Shift, to grab the base and plug it in as A, and I actually might Control, Shift, and plug it in as B, amplify, uh, the normal, uh, and I shouldn't have taken my surface out, confused, confused myself with that. Basically, I want to amplify my normal vector, and there I go, messing up again. <clears throat> my amplification will be a number slider 2.00. Sorry for screwing this up. It's just, I get a little jumbles. I've never done videos this way. I usually just go off the top of my head and just keep working it. <coughs> and I guess this would have been easier if I took a look at it this way. Uh, that will be the direction of the extrusion, and you will have created a prep. <coughs> the reason I'm bringing that in is because I want to be able to see the item that comes out, and you could see that as an outcome. Uh, if you were going to uh, start to cluster this, do an output of cluster. Think of the prep as the output. Uh, there's, uh, and you can name it differently here, so it'll come out in your cluster name differently. We can get into that detail later. We have an input. We have a uh, another input. Uh, which will count as a parameter, and we have a very interesting way to actually offset the surface here. And you can see it's been offset in that direction, whatever the normal was at that point too. Now you may say, well, what if I didn't want it offset in that direction? What if I wanted to, and I'll pull my slider back just for uh, purposes of being able to manipulate this. Ugh, sorry about this. It's early morning. I don't know why I'm so fudgy. Let's offset it about 10 so we can see the surface. And now as I change this, you'll see how it actually positions itself to whatever the normal would be uh, if I go in here and actually uh, visualize my vector. So if I went in here and I said, okay, I want to see what's happening and visualize the vector and do another multiplication or amplifying the vector, I'll take the uh, point from here and take the vector from here. You can see there's a vector on there. Uh, that's actually positioned that as I change this UV uh, section of the isotrim, it's turning on angle. It's kind of hard to see, but it is angling differently. It's not staying straight. And if I went here and went up to uh, maybe the right view, you can see that a little better. As I move this around, you see the arrow actually takes on different angles as it goes across the surface of what's happening there. And if I grab the surface, you'd see that for sure. Um, so you can see how it follows the surface. And I'll try and make that visible here. Uh, so you can see uh, what's well, actually happening. So in doing so, I could have probably set up something like an MD slider here. And I'm watching the time because I want to get through one other script. Uh, I could put on an MD slider and uh, put that into the U, put that into the V. And then when I actually went in and drew everything, you could see I could have some control over the position of where this thing would be offset. That's kind of fun, uh, but it, it makes for a wonky piece of jello and things get a little funky on that surface and i really like the kind of mimicry of what would happen analog if this was actually a slump of rubber or something that would mold or had drag lines from welding so i'm just going to leave this in as that domain I'll take off that say that's the first part of the script now how else could i have extruded that and let's set this back at 0.5 because that seems to be uh the angle that it wanted to be uh and of course i haven't put my u count on yet so i have to put my 0.5 in there you can see it straightens right up so let's take that item and let's uh, turn that one off. Uh, now let's extrude it in another way. And this would be the way that I, I prefer over that if I can swing it. <coughs> let's go into surface and divide surface. Um, take my surface and give it a UV count of how many times I want to divide it. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just type in 12. So it was at 10 and 10. <coughs> 12 and 12. And what I'll do here is I will use an amplification of my vector. Amplitude of, uh, I'll give it a value of, let's do the same thing, 2.00, so we can mimic the same height of what we want to do. And we want the normals of this to actually be brought in as a list of lists. Uh, we want to move that geometry, and we can decide where we want to move that geometry. I'm going to move that geometry 
in the motion of this vector from those points. You see all those points jump up. So this is a little more understandable what's happening. And then I'm going to take a surface. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> surface from points. Take the geometry and try and use that. But in order to, I need a U count on that. I can't just plug in my U count from here, which was 12. I have to think about how it's divided the surface. So I actually have to do a quick addition of adding. Um, uh, where's my addition node right there? Addition. I'm going to have to add double clicking uh, quotes one, one to this equation. So I can hit control shift, pull that back in here and put this in here. And you'll see I actually get my points. Uh, uh, normals 12. Uh, why did I not get my points? Because all my data here is still in a list of lists. So at this point, I don't usually, I usually frown on it. I go into path mapper, but for this equation, I'm just going to do a quick flatten and you see we can get a surface. Now you can't just take this surface and go from, I'm watching time 11 minutes. You can't just go to a surface and say, okay, let's debrep this item uh, and let's debrep this item. So we can't just take our original surfaces uh, because of how they've been built and do that. You have to be a little wiser and slow down. And I don't mind doing this. You have two items and you want to lock them together. Now you'd think you could just grab your loft, grab your edges, and grab your other edges and throw them in. And they'd lock together. But you get this real nastiness. And whatever, what I've tried to do with options has not worked out so well. So what I would say is, well, let's just take our time and say we have four, four items, which are the sides. So with that, let's grab ourselves a list item. And let's go in and make it one, zero, one, two, three. Let's copy that. Let's deep wrap each item this way. And sometimes you have to slow down this way. And you could type in index numbers, but it's better just to leave them in the node and use these plus signs. Let's take the first one here and take the first one here. Let's take the second one here and the second one here. Let's take the third one here, third one here. Let's take the fourth one here and the fourth one here. You end up with a really nice form. And all you have to do to bring this together in the end is uh, neaten up your script if you want to. Uh, you can you can grab a merge function to bring all the parts back together um, for your prep. So you can definitely go in here and grab yourself a merge and say, okay, with that merge, I'm going to want uh, all this data. So I'll start with the sides, which isn't something I normally do. Um, I grab my top and I grab my bottom. Uh, this being my bottom, and I've kind of made this merge backwards all the way back to our initial surface. And there you go. You've got a really nice object in a merge tool that you can just take all the other algorithms and say, I'm not really looking at you, but I've got a nice tool for actually making a very cool structure. Uh, and it actually is a little more bumpy and jumpy and wonderful than this item. So if we turn this one on, you can see this item is just slightly different from how I built this item. So you got this one uh, right there, and we've got this item right here. Subtle little changes. So pretty cool. I'm going to put them both on and just click the one and the other. You can see how there's uh, that nerves and Okay, this is very subtle, and you can get into all the details of that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. It's two of my scripts that I use the most. Uh, I have them highlighted in my snippet tools, so I can do uh, extrude surface this way to normals, extrude surface this way to normals. They're right up here. I have so many extrude surface, uh, extrude along normal surface scripts because I just keep reinventing little subtle changes to each one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks very much for watching.